Here I've got an easy repair, anyone can do themselves. In this case, it's a 2017 Kia Forte. The check engine light's coming on, it isn't running right. We'll open the hood, but thank goodness the check engine light is on. So rather than guess, we'll use a computer. I hooked it up the car, as you can see, it says PO301, cylinder one misfire detected. Now unfortunately, these PO codes are what are called generic codes. Lots of things can make an engine misfire. Could be the spark plug, could be the ignition coil, could be the wiring, could be the computer. And just don't think it's ignition system. You got a bad fuel injector that can make a car misfire. Gasket, intake gasket, head gasket on number one, that can make it misfire. But the absolute simplest thing to do is this. First, we'll take the stupid beauty cover off, get it out of the way, and here's the ignition coils. One, two, three, four. Now it says number one is misfiring, so we're gonna take that out. You just unscrew it. Sometimes they're hard to get out, so you wiggle them and unplug them. In this case, it's a dual system. You have to make it harder than normal, so you gotta click it up, then squeeze it to get it off. It won't come off if you don't push that up. The number two ignition coil. Get that out, wiggle it, pull it off, get the screwdriver, unlock the tab. There we go. Then we flip it over and squeeze it, <clears throat> off it comes. Then we'll do a simple test. We'll put number two in the number one hole, and number one in the number two hole. Put the bolts back in. You gotta make sure they're lined up. They gotta line up with their hole, and get them snug. And remember to plug them in. This one plugs in here, snap. This one plugs in there. We'll leave the top off, it's just a stupid beauty cover. Then we'll just push reset on the scan tool and that resets it so there's no codes. Then we'll take it for a little drive. Well, I'll drive around, the light came back on, so that's good. Now we can check it. So we'll plug the working end in again. Here we go. See what it says. Here we go, it's gonna read it. Well, it's got one code and the code is P0301. Misfire cylinder number one, so it's not the coil because it's still not firing right. Well, guess what? Now we're back to square one, but at least we didn't waste any money. We swapped the cause, but the misfire stayed where it was originally, so it's not the ignition coil. So put the coil back, take the other one off. So we're gonna check the spark plug, and lo and behold, the spark plug is loose. It's not in tight enough. We're gonna check it out anyway. It doesn't look bad, but who knows? Since this one's loose, we're gonna check them all, and I'll probably replace them anyway. Take them all out, see if any of them are loose too. Stick them in the spark bug holes. These are a little loose too. And put it all back together and see what happens. Make sure you put them in the right holes. This is the green one, that's number one. And now we're missing one, there it is, there's number two. Then we'll hook all the cables up. One, two, those we didn't unhook, and then we'll bolt them all back in, all four of them. We'll start her up again, see what happens. Well, it's running good now, so we'll take it for a road test and see what happens. And now I'm back, it's running fine, no check engine light. I did put in four new spark plugs, the old ones had gotten loose. But it's got 80,000 miles, so I put in new spark plugs, no more misfiring. And you might wonder, why did it only have a misfire on one cylinder, and not all of them if the spark plugs were worn out? Well, even though it's a machine, things don't necessarily wear evenly. In this case, the number one spark plug got looser and wore more than the other spark plugs did, but you're gonna change them, change them all. Don't go through the trouble of guessing here and there. Change all four of them, make sure they're nice and snug, so they don't get loose again, and it won't have misfires. In this case, just a misfire on one cylinder, not on the others. Eventually, you probably would have done them all, but we want to fix cars. So when you fix them, fix them right. If one's bad, change them all. I'm gonna show you how to fix a car that isn't idling correctly. This Mercedes runs okay going down the road, but when you come to a stop, it's shaking, wiggling too much. You can tell it's not running right, but it hasn't yet tripped the check engine light and being a professional mechanic, I hooked my giant $5,000 scan tool up and found 56 different codes, none of which are related to the engine idling. They are anti-lock brake codes, communications for the airbag codes, lots of weird stuff, but nothing that would make it run weird. So we gotta start from scratch here. Idling is the most crucial part 
of your engine when it's working correctly because everything has to be perfect. It can be off a bit when you're going fast and still run okay, but when it's idling, it's gotta be perfect. You gotta have the right amount of air, the right amount of fuel, and the right amount of ignition power to the spark plugs to make the engine ride. So always start with the basics. First thing we're gonna check is the air filter. Take all this plastic stuff out of the way. In this case, it has two air filters, one on each side. And of course, being a Mercedes Benz, it has to use one of these stupid fancy sockets, in this case, TP20 socket. So you unscrew all the stupid bolts to hold it in place. They got a little carried away here. And off it comes. And they're filthy. So we're gonna change them. Now this baby has two spark plugs per cylinder. It's a V8, so it's got 16 spark plugs. So let's check the spark plugs. It's often near impossible to get these off, so we'll have these pliers, stick them in and wiggle them. Then we got one off. Then we'll use a spark plug socket, wrench, and see what they look like. Hard to get out. They've probably been in here a long time. Babies are in there, finally. And as we can see, there's a lot of corrosion on it. These babies have been in a long time, so we're gonna change them out. Now we gotta do 16 of these things. What a pain in the butt. Mercedes Benz under design. Ford tried that dual spark plug years ago and they gave up with it. Heck, they even used that stuff in World War II. They may think they're high tech, but they're still pretty low tech when it comes to a lot of things like that. Old school. Get them nice and snug. They get up and then a little tug. Then you snap the wire back on. Sometimes it's hard to find. There's not much working room. Uh, there it goes. Now to get to the rest of the spark plugs, you gotta unbolt the coil pack here so you can reach them. Otherwise, there's no working room. So you unbolt all the coil packs and get them out of the way. Now, of course, once you've done the eight on the one side, we gotta do the eight on the other side. This baby is a pain in the behind, but at least it's exactly the same. Now finally, we got all the spark plugs in, all 16 of them, and the coil, and as long as we're here, let's look around for any vacuum leaks. This thing is 15 years old, looking for cracked plastic parts. You can see there's been cracked stuff that's been JB welded back on. A lot of plastic stuff break on these old ones, but we're looking for vacuum lines and stuff that might have cracks or the rubber that's leaking. Well, I don't see any in this 97 degree heat. I'm just gonna put the filters on, start it up and see what happens. Filter just goes back in, screws on this side, line them up and bolt the stupid things back on. Awful long threads on these babies. And this one, even dirtier than the other one. Then you slip the whole thing back on. Back where the air goes. Then slip the sides on. One there. One on this side. And stick the rest of the Super Beauty cover on. And we unlock it and start it up. And here we go. We come to a stop and... It's idling smooth as silk. All the shaking's gone. So now you know how to stop a shaking car from doing the shimmy while you're idling. Now one of the most annoying things is your car's running okay, but you go to get it inspected and it fails the test. When we plug in the old scan tool on any scan tool, we'll read this, even a $20 one, it shows it's got PO100 mass volume airflow A circuit. And here's how that circuit works. This is a mass airflow sensor. Inside it, little electronic part. It measures how many grams of air flow into the engine per second and then tells the computer how much fuel to send to the fuel injector so the car runs perfectly. So let's open the hood and find it. Here it is, right here. Bolts on here, snaps on here. Now if we look closely, well, see, there's no frayed wiring or anything. Sometimes the wiring gets frayed. Sometimes that's the problem. Sometimes you can even clean them with mass airflow sensor cleaner. You want to use just this because it leaves no residue. But I've been working on these things for years, and I know when it gets that particular coat on a Nissan, it's a problem in the circuit. It's not dirt or anything. It's not running rich or lean. There's a problem in the circuit. And from my experience in these, it's always the sensor itself is just wearing out. Now, if you feel lucky, you can take it out and clean it. I got a whole video on cleaning it. Make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. You can watch that in one if you feel real lucky. But with this particular coat, there's a problem in the circuit. And from my experience, there's only three things that can do that. A bad sensor, bad wiring, or a bad main computer. Now, I've looked at this wiring. I don't see anything frayed. And where it frays is always at the end where the sensor is. I see them where they get brittle, where they come apart. I'm going to on snap it just to make sure it's not corroded and green though. So we'll squeeze it and pull it off. 
Ah, and let's look inside. As you can see, it's pretty well sealed with these seals. Everything is shiny and metal. There's no corrosion there. When we look inside here, it's kind of dark. It doesn't look bad, but I'm going to take it off and inspect it in the sun. So we'll unscrew this. And since this is all one piece, we'll just unbolt the air filter box and pull the whole thing off. Out it comes. Now, as you can see in the sunlight, this is crystal clean. Not dirty, no problem with that. We're just going to replace it. Easy job. Just take the bolts off. It's a lot easier doing this once you get it off the car. All kinds of working room here. Even that one's kind of tight because that's in the way. Isn't that typical? You take all those off. And normally you got to measure which way it goes so you don't put it backwards. It's got a little marker on here and it says airflow goes this way. But in this case, you don't have to worry because one end bolts on, the other's different. So you can't put this one on backwards. A lot of them, both ends are the same and you could put it in backwards, it wouldn't run right. But this, it only bolts on one way, so you don't have to worry with this design. And here you want to use a new one. Rebuilt ones, you never know. This is brand new. It's already got a new gasket. Just bolts on. Get all four bolts on. And make sure they're all tight. Get them nice and snug. You don't want any air leaking past them. Then flip it over and do the other side. It's important that you have an airtight seal because this is all filtered air. You don't want non-filtered air with dirt in. That will ruin these things. These are hot mass airflow sensors. When you shut the car off, it burns any impurities off these wires by getting them glowing red hot. If you get any dirt on that, it'll make it burn itself out. Just like if you touched the filament of a light bulb with your greasy hands, it'd ruin it. So make sure it's nice and tight. Now we put it back on first thing. Slip it over the rubber. The one that slipped over, put the air box in its place. Make all the snaps click. Realize there's one's up here too, and one you can't even see on the other side. But you'll hear it click when I hit it there. Then we just tighten up the clamp. Get it nice and tight. You don't want air leaking there especially. And while you're at it, go to the other side. Follow it, make sure everything's solid. Make sure that's all bolted on tight, it is. Okay, then we go back inside, and what we do is, with the scan tool hooked up, we will turn the ignition key on. So the key is on, the idiot lights are on, but the car's not running. Then we go to the code reader and go back, and what we want to do is erase codes. So we'll go to diagnostic codes up here, erase codes, yes. So we click yes, guess we gotta click it twice, there. Then we enter, turn key on with engine off, enter, now it's erasing the code. You have to erase it because if you fix it, eventually it will erase itself, but they could take a while and this is instantaneous. You can see now it says there's no codes, but we don't trust anyone, so we'll go back, we'll go back to read codes, and let's see what it says. No codes found, so now it's reset. And now comes the easy boring part. We just start it up. and let it warm up. We've reset it, but cars have what's called a drive cycle. And in order to pass the emissions test, it has to go through the drive cycle. So we're gonna take it on a highway, going 55 miles an hour or faster, then drive it in town a little and see what happens. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to special functions. As we do special functions, it's quite interesting. We want the global OB2, and what we're going to is the drive cycle monitor. And as you can see here, there are one, two, three, four, five incomplete monitors. So I restart the car, and we're going to watch these. Now there's only four. It's already reset one. Most vehicles, it'll pass inspection that it has to have just one monitor incomplete. There's four now. But this is an old car. It's a 98. And back in those days, you're still allowed to have two incomplete. So we just have to drive it until there's only two incompletes then we can get it inspected. And as I said, you gotta drive on the highway a while at 55, 60 miles an hour, so here we go. And wouldn't you know it, I got a road testing going fast. Here I am in a massive traffic jam in Houston. Isn't that just typical? <laughs> just realize that sometimes it takes a while, especially these older cars. Drive it and watch the monitors until it's down to two. Well, now it's getting down there. And hooray, now it's down to two, we can go back. Now, as I said, most modern cars, when they're 2,000 or newer, you can only have one mill not ready to pass the test. But this is a 98, so with two mills not ready, it will pass the test. 
Okay, now there's only two mills not ready. That means this particular one in 98 will pass the test. But we got to make sure of one thing. We're going to go back. Diagnostic codes. Here we go. And pray it hasn't said any while we were driving. So here goes nothing. Read codes. No codes found. That means it's going to pass the emissions test. And we succeeded. Hurrah. Sometimes it's a pretty easy job if you use your noggin. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.